Uh, so shifting into the realm of service planning, um, you've been doing a series of service enhancement plans for different districts uh, or different regions around your district. Um, we've had comments from readers that there seem to be some um, relatively new density in the region. Uh, South Beaverton uh, was pointed out. Uh, one of my neighbors in Northwest pointed out that um, the whole Conway uh, transition area in Northwest and the North Pearl, which has a number of tall buildings slated, uh, don't really have a lot of transit service. Um, you, you're doing these planning exercises, but you're going to have the resources to add new frequent service lines or other uh, service in those areas? Well, I think, um, first of all, let me just sort of notion, that note the uh, service enhancement plans, I think, have been really an important um, effort on our part. And as you know, we started that in the west side, where I think literally you can sort of say the major planning efforts associated with our service were untouched by human hands since about 1996, which was probably about the time we did the plan for the opening of the West Side Light Rail 98. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, the, you, know, you talk about dramatic change, you look at Washington County and there's been dramatic change. So we were able to come up, meet, engage with the employers, with uh, business groups, with neighborhood groups, with the local governments, and come up with a really a consistent and commonly held vision for what transit needs to be. And then we started implementing pieces of that. So for example, one of the first pieces that we saw was the need to make the Cornell bus a continuous bus uh, from uh, Sunset Transit Center actually into um, downtown Hillsborough. And, um, and then also provide better connections between the light rail line and uh, the Intel Ron Lar Acres Employment Center. And by the way, that same line, the 47 serves PCC Rock Creek. And, so we were able to put some of those readjustments and realignments of routes into place right away using uh, essentially existing resources. Um, so that was a realignment as opposed to new growth. Mm -hmm. And actually what we've seen is that ridership on those lines are up about 48% from where they were before. Mm -hmm. So we saw really good results of that. So that's one thing that I would say is that there's a lot to be gained from realignment. Another um, aspect of that <coughs> that we're, we have worked really closely with a number of other partners on, including the city of Forest Grove, is a service called Grovelink, which is a, a small shuttle bus that runs locally and actually two loops east and west of the uh, downtown Hillsboro uh, to serve as a collector distributor within their neighborhoods and all connecting to the 57 bus, which is that community's lifeline then into the rest of the region. So there's been a, a number of innovations, even though we've been in a period of time when we've not been expanding service greatly, where we've been able to do some pretty responsive things. So I would say the same thing is true in every other service enhancement mm -hmm. plan we're doing now. We've started one for the Southwest, and to a large extent, as I mentioned before, that was responsive to the uh, citizen comments we heard in the Southwest corridor, which is, you know, this isn't just about getting to Portland. I want to be able to get mm -hmm. from Tiger to Wallaton from Tiger to, um, to Beaverton. So that's, that effort's going on. And we're also then, as part of the uh, local service planning for the south, southeast sector, the, where the Portland-Milwaukee line will run, um, underway with that plan as well. Uh, and also looking out in uh, the east side. So my sense is that um, these will be visionary. <coughs> they will be aspirational. Uh, they won't immediately all be affordable, but this is a growing region with a growing um, payroll tax base, and my hope is that we can, over time, begin to um, implement some of these changes. And is that likely to look like more frequent service lines or more local service? Do you have a sense of that? So well, I'll use the west side, Washington County, as an example. And what we found was, um, frankly, a very familiar pattern to those uh, your, your readers in the Portland area, which is that they felt they had pretty good east-west service and connections mm -hmm. into downtown, but they had pretty lousy north-south service within their, um, their local communities. And so, to a large extent, what we're finding is the need to begin to create a grid in Washington County that, to, to a large extent, parallels the grid of service that we have in Portland, um, west of 82nd Avenue. And I would tell you, we're finding exactly the same thing with the east side service enhancement plan is that, for example, um, uh, the 122nd bus line number 71 
A lot of people are looking forward to that at some point in time being frequent service. I think it would be a, a top-notch frequent service line, but also then beginning to extend that service further east and north-south connections, connecting with what is really a, quite a good network uh, east-west already. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think, th you know, I, I suppose you, what you're beginning to find is this isn't all rocket science. There mm -hmm. are some very challenging things about it, um, but we pioneered some pretty impressive transit service here in Portland, and this, this system that operates in Portland between the Willamette River and 82nd actually mm -hmm. is a pretty good model for many other parts of the region. All right. So as uh, in the longer term budget years, how do you then uh, allocate the, the whatever increased revenue is available between opening up new high capacity service versus investing in the frequent service line with the TriMet policy or outlook on that? Well, part of that is, I think, um, going to be a regional appetite for how fast do you want to grow um, the transit. We're, we're, we have a certain level of payroll tax income, we have a certain level of fair income, and we'll do always try to do the most we can with that. Um, if somebody wants to increase our allowance, we can do more, uh, and we can do more <laughs> faster. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not asking for that right now. We'll, I think we've got to demonstrate that we can do the most we can with the resources we're given right now. And for example, that's why we're working so hard on our cost structure um, and why there's a lot of controversy over our current union contract conversation.